Hello, this is Patrick with New Jersey's Outdoor Adventures YouTube channel. A few weeks back, I was at Turkey Swamp Campground and I bumped into some folks that have a really cool, what I would consider vintage motorhome, and they were just starting dinner, so uh, they gave me a quick tour and uh, we met back up and they're gonna give you guys a tour now of their motorhome. Ken and Stephanie, welcome to New Jersey Outdoor Adventures. Hi Patrick, how you doing? Hi Patrick. Uh, this is our 1990 Lazy Days uh, 22 foot uh, <coughs> rear uh, king, size, king size bed, twin bed combination. And <coughs> we bought this about a year ago uh, through RV Trader. And we got it from a couple in uh, Pennsylvania that had just moved from Temecula, California. Where these are made out in California, that's the only place they're made and uh, you have to order them probably nine months ahead to get a new one. Uh, but uh, they were moving out and needed to sell it, so we got it. It only had 34,000 miles on it, and it was in great condition. And uh, I'd like to take you inside and show you. Uh, so this is the Twin King layout with a mid-kitchen. Uh, it's a, the dinette is in the back here with the, that goes down into either two twin beds or a king size bed that you can sleep across. The mid kitchen and there's a cab over a bed up front uh, that probably sleep two small adults or two kids. And in that over cab there's also some storage up there. But uh, the bathroom, we have a full size bathroom and a full bathroom with the toilet. Uh, RV toilet, it's actually porcelain, and we have a shower inside. Uh, if you want the light, and uh, it's a full, pretty good sized shower. I'm 6'4 and I don't have any problem in it. The sink is in the shower. There's a medicine cabinet over here that, for some storage, and a vent, and two LED lights in here. And the, the one good thing too is that the toilet, they thought up enough to put the toilet paper roll underneath the sink so that doesn't get wet when you're showering. And it's, it's a, a wand shower uh, head that you can use. And actually we tried it, you can actually pull it out the window and, and do it if you want to rinse off outside. And we've got a clothes hook up here. And we have one really nice thing on top of the, over the bed. There's a hatch, an emergency exit hatch, and it's also great ventilation. And there's windows on both sides, but right now they're covered with Reflectex to keep the cool air in here. There's a fan on the end, and uh, there's a light up here over the end of the bed, the head of the bed, which is great for reading at night. And you also have a, a light here that you can turn on, like down at the, on the floor, so if you get up in the middle of the night, you have a little bit of light without disturbing other people. Uh, there's also a storage box in here at the head of the bed where you can put you know, your phones and other stuff, books and stuff like that. We have this, this, oh this, this is, uh, we just put this blanket up here because it, when you have the air conditioning on there's no, not much insulation up in the cab of the truck. So if it's hot, it gets really hot up there. So we pull this down and, uh, and this really makes a big difference at night holding the cool air in the back here in the camper. And you can lift this up and stick your head in there and it's probably about 10 degrees difference. And this chair also swivels around. Uh, so if somebody wants to stay in bed for a while and you can swivel this around, have a cup of coffee up here and read a book or whatever. And we have uh, this little counter when you first come in, which is really convenient. We have our keys up here. We can place a little uh, rack up here for magazines and we keep our phone chargers here. Uh, there's a cabinet above that we keep like cleaning supplies, just quite big. And a cabinet below that just miscellaneous uh, uh, tank liquids and uh, emergency lights and fire extinguisher, stuff like that. Down below is a carbon monoxide detector, and uh, we have, we're going in here to the refrigerator. The refrigerator is about six and a half cubic feet. It's a dual, uh, dual uh, supply. It's electric and propane. So if you're plugged into electric and for some reason the electric goes out, it switches automatically to propane. Uh, and it's, it's quite 
quite large. Uh, we have no problem. We've been away as much as five weeks at a time and had no problem storing food. And this is the refrigerator. And we keep we keep our dishes and silverware in here, so this that fits in there really well. And this is the uh, fuses and the inverter is in, in there. This is our furnace vent, and this up here we keep utensils. We try to keep every we really want to keep stuff organized as much as possible. Otherwise, you go crazy in a small space. And this is just a junk drawer, tape and different things, batteries and stuff like that. And here we, we have our you know wraps and some other utensils and can opener and stuff. And down below is a really large bin to keep I keep my shoes in, and uh, that's pretty big in there. And on the other side, under the stove, is another smaller bin. We keep my wife keeps her shoes. The closet. This is incredible. The size of this closet for this size camper, the double door, and it's got the these little hooks here so that stuff doesn't slide. It just sits in those grooves and it's it's really large and we keep our, our extension for our table and for our bed in here. Just keep a little uh, bungee cord wrapped around that to keep it steady when you're riding. Keep the computer in there. And up front here we got a couple of pictures. This was in 1976 I think was our first cross-country trip. We bought a, a, a tradesman Dodge Tradesman van and I built out the inside and we traveled across the country for six weeks and uh, inside you can see that box there that's that's a porta potty in there and it also serves as a seat with the cushion on top there's a cabinet there's another smaller cabinet uh, you can see in here uh, we keep our food there there's an ice box it was a Coleman stand-up ice box that actually kept stuff cold for like three days if you didn't open it too much and the bed was back here uh, and the end of the bed lifted up to give an extension because I'm 6'4". So, and it was all storage underneath the bed. Had a, a louver windows so we could, with screens I put in so we could uh, get some air at night. Because, uh, yeah, that was... Uh, <clears throat> and uh, so this was... Yeah, we had the roof rack up there. Well, actually, we did carry stuff up there for, for a while, but then it got very wet. <laughs> so we started just loading it inside the camper. This is our uh, Dometic air conditioner. I think it's about uh, 1350 BTUs and it really keeps it very, this is the original and it's still keeping it very cool in here. And it, it has a heat strip too, but the heat strip kind of went. And the kitchen, we have a double sink, double stainless steel sink with a pull-out faucet that we just replaced, replaced the old one. And uh, the uh, paper towel rack is a ratcheting paper towel rack because if you're traveling, you'll find that the paper towels unroll when you're on the road. So this has a little friction in it and it doesn't unroll. And this is, this is just uh, like a vinyl, uh, I don't even know what you call it. They're not real tiles, but they look really nice. They clean it up nice. And we got this little bamboo bamboo uh, spice rack. There's also an extension on the counter if you need just a little bit more space. And we have the, the counters are fiberglass. These are original. And we've got some small drawers here that we use for some more spices and, uh, and you know our light stick, lighting stick, and, and trash bags. And then we have some some storage underneath here where we have canned goods and pots and cleaning supplies underneath. Uh, it's quite a lot of space in there, really. Um, and above, oh, the windows open. Uh, these are above in the kitchen, so you can be here and you can look out at the scenery while you're cooking or washing the dishes. And uh, <clears throat> we have here's the lazy days where you can check your the gauge to check your tanks and your, uh, your battery and propane and also your water pump goes on there and your water heater is here and uh, that's the original and the <coughs> cabinet space again up here is quite large too it goes back further in there 
and we, we don't have any problem keeping enough food in here. Original, original stove, Wedgwood stove. It's got four burners. They all work. And it's got a gas oven that works as well. We've used it. We don't use an oven a lot, but we have used it a few times. The vent hood, with the vent light, still works. It's a little dim, but works. And the vent fan works. And we've got a small microwave, Kenmore microwave, that works very well for heating coffee and just little, little some food things. And this little nice little touch here is a, a glass divider just to keep, to keep the heat off of somebody sitting here and just adds a nice little touch. And <clears throat> uh, my wife made these curtains to put in. They go all the way around. We put a, I put a track up at the top and it goes, it goes all the way around the back. The, you've got a panoramic view here and uh, these windows all open up on the sides. The back windows don't. And we have storage where we keep our bedding. We keep there's two bins here, and we keep the bedding in there. Uh, we've got outlet up here, and there's a, a 12 volt outlet, and this is the for the uh, cable. Uh, and my wife keeps her clothes up in here, and we have three bins. She has three bins, and pouch, and that's where her clothes are. And then on the other side. My clothes, plenty of space for clothes. We can even use a little, I could probably put another bin on top if I needed to. And we've got this original fan that works very well. It really helps cool the, the whole back here. And it, it also oscillates. And the uh, we have our thermostat right here. It regulates the heat for the furnace. Uh, oh, the bed. The bed, the, the beds can be, you can go up, I'm sorry, <laughs> you can do a twin bed by lifting these and the legs come down. Okay. Yeah, the legs come down and you can move the mattresses over and to make, and take this down to make two twin beds. Or the table, this table comes down, um, the leg lifts up, this leg lifts up and the table rests on two tracks rests on these and then the, the two panels that I sh showed you in the closet before go in there the mattresses pull down and it makes a king-size bed that you can sleep across you could actually get three people on it <laughs> if it's big enough and uh, there's a vent we have two vents these are just uh, manual vents that help quite a bit with the airflow uh, now this one's closed in we use these these pillows, which help a lot, keep the to help keep the camper cool in the uh, summer and warmer in the winter. They reflect the sun in the summer if you use the reflective side up, because you get a lot of heat coming in through through these if you just leave them open. And we also put reflectix around the windows on the sides uh, if it's really hot out, just to keep the camper cooler. Uh, there's more storage back here. Where this is where a DVD player and the power strip up there, and then over here we just keep some paperwork and a tablet and games. And our TV, uh, which we sometimes use cable if there's cable available, and we also have a window antenna that we can put in. And in some places we've gotten up to 40 stations with that, but that just depends on how close you are to uh, the towers. Uh, now the okay, this is oh, the outside of the camper uh, is all aluminum and painted. So there's no delamination, delaminating where the, the outside comes apart from the from the inside wall. Uh, <clears throat> this is the batteries. There's two. These are what uh, I guess you call them wet cell batteries. Two 12 volt. That's what powers the coach. And then we've got 
<clears throat> got a storage compartment under here where if we had a generator that's where it would go uh, we'd store our uh, leveling blocks there and this is the uh, this is the furnace and this is the back of the refrigerator where we have an outlet too that you could use for outside if you needed it to plug something in if you had a TV or something we have a, a porch light up on top it's yellow keeps away the mosquitoes and uh, the, we have a double lock there's a bolt lock and a regular handle lock which is very secure and the doors are very solid. The screen comes apart from this. You leave that open and have the screen in there. Pull down awning, it's manual, and that comes out about eight or nine feet and gives you a lot of shade. The uh, the rods from the, the from the uh, canopy come down and lock into this on either end. Uh, and we come down here and we have more storage. And this is where we keep, we have a, a outdoor two burner stove and we have a gr griddle plate and collapsible bucket, collapsible table, tarp, uh, carpet for outside, outdoor carpet for outside the camper, and a water filter which is important. This is really important to, to use have fresh clean water and then here's our propane tank uh, I don't remember how many gallons this is maybe 10 plus it's got wheel cover this is unusual too this has got some like wheel covers that this, these flip up if you need to change the tire or something but it just adds a little flare to the side there the, uh, we replaced the, the running lights on top and the side and the backup lights and signal lights with LED lights uh, which is like 20 times brighter than they were before and uh, there's, there's an aluminum ladder up to the roof if you need to get up there to fix something or do something there is a storage rack up there but there's really I don't I wouldn't want to put anything up there really because it really cut the mileage is not that great to begin with and this, this opens up, uh, you take that bolt right here, and the spare tire is protected in there. And uh, there's a hitch over here, and underneath there's a, there's a connection for, uh, to, to tow something with. You can have the lights on the tow, the, the tow vehicle. And license plate light that re was replaced. Along here is another storage bin. They're not real tall, but they, they are pretty big. And we keep several bins with electrical supply, electrical cords and just miscellaneous like propane tanks for the, for the stove or uh, hoses for the tanks. And we keep a couple of chairs in here and a, it's always good to have a, have a shovel if you need to level the camper. And <clears throat> this is where the, the hose used to be. Uh, they would store in here, but there's nothing behind here right now. Look, on, plan on putting a PVC pipe in there to put the hoses in. Gas refill. This is the 110 volt cable. Oh, and this this just uh, pushes right back in, and there's a box inside that it uh, that it goes into. You just push it in and pull it out when you need it. This is city water. Uh, if you want to hook your camper up to have the water just coming in like you do at home, you can hook it up to that. We usually fill the tank and just run off the tank. And this is where you fill the fresh water in the tank. You use a fresh water hose, uh, which is different than a regular garden hose. It's a, a food grade hose and you just fill up the tank. The, the tanks, I didn't mention, but the tanks are pretty, the, the fresh water tank is a 50 gallon tank. And the uh, holding tank for gray water is 25 and black water is 25. So it's, it's fairly big. And we can go probably a week. Uh, and there's a vent, a vent out here for the, the, the vent, the, uh, the stove actually vents out outside. It's not a res recirculating vent. And the, the, the tank, the uh, gray water tank comes out over here. You pull that valve, you open this up, connect your hose, put it into the, uh, the disposal tank and open up the valve 
and uh, and release all the tank, close it up, close everything back up again. Same thing, this is the black water tank, which you do the same thing, but you usually do this first. Do this one first, and then do the gray water second so that it cleans out your hose. And this is where the uh, cable TV hooks up, right here. If you're in a campground that might have table, cable TV, you can do that. And uh, we've got some really nice mirrors that came with it. That, you know, really give you a good visibility. Uh, the it's the original upholstery. Everything's pretty original. Yeah, I didn't mention it to you before, but there's they came originally. They came with uh, CB radios. Uh, this one, I don't know if it works. It, it makes noise, but I think we need an antenna for it. Kind of an interesting thing that they were doing. And, uh, Such a classic design. You know, when you look at this, um, they really added a lot of style to the look of the motorhome when they yeah. made it. It's just not a big square box. They added this integrated running board over the wheel well with the front air dam. And then the back, the way it slopes, and is a very classic design. It's interesting too because even the new ones look like this. They haven't really changed the styling at all. And uh, that's, you know, from 30 years ago. Uh, yeah, the, the styling is pretty much the same. They, they upgrade you know, on some of the inside things a little bit, but uh, the body stays the same. So this is uh, really helpful to a lot of our viewers. Um, People go out and buy a brand new motorhome right off a of dealer's lot. They could have one custom made. But you were able to find one that was a little bit older, that was in great mechanical and physical shape, and do some modifications, and you're able to enjoy the lifestyle in a different way. You didn't have to build your own. Do you have any tips for our viewers that maybe want to take on a project like this, buy something older, do a little bit of updating, and hit the road this way. Is there any challenges that came up that maybe you could help some of our viewers out with? Well, there's, there's something that we didn't do that I would advise people to do uh, is to have the vehicle checked out by a mechanic. Uh, for whatever reason, we didn't do it, but uh, we took it for a ride and everything, and it sounded great. We looked at it pretty closely. But I would, if you can, I would definitely have a mechanic look at it. We had a few issues mechanically, uh, nothing major, but that we got repaired. So that's one thing, and I would just, uh, I would go with your gut too. I mean, if you look at it, it looks like it was kept really bad. I mean, messy and just stuff like that. You know, it just people don't usually take care of the vehicle either if they're not taking care of the inside. Uh, I'll say one thing that was funny is that we, we never <clears throat> knew, I mean, an engine. I mean, we started out with the trailer, so when we bought this with an engine, and we went on our first trip, the noise in it, we figured it's going to sound like a truck. Well, we couldn't even talk we to could, each yeah. other. We, we got to New Orleans and we took it in for, uh, to the shop and it was our uh, radiator clutch, fan clutch, that was not disengaging or something. And we didn't know it because we just thought it was an old truck and that's the way it sounded. So that's something you might have caught in a, in a mechanic check right, it beforehand. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, so that was... Uh, Couple of couple of things, but overall, you know, uh, we put some money into it, but we have something probably that'll last us the rest Long of our time. RVing life. Absolutely, we and love it. it yeah, it's we love just it. So comfortable, lots of storage. We, the body is well made. We, it's just it, like, that, and that's something I want to point out here to the viewers because most motorhomes are not built like this. They're not built with aluminum cladding, so. You know, the biggest Achilles heel on all these Class C motorhomes is this overhead cab area will start to sag over time and it causes the body to buckle here, a crack, and it allows delamination. Once you get water behind the fiberglass motorhomes, there's only Luan board behind there and some strips of wood. So, you know, if you're going to buy an older Class C style motorhome and it's not made from aluminum like this one, these are this whole cab area is the area that you want to inspect for rot. Right, right. You want to check for any cracks, like you said, or sagging. 
Also, I didn't mention it when we were inside, but there, uh, there's metal framing in there. There's like steel frame in the camper. So it's not staples with Luan with fiberglass. It's structure. Yeah, it's structure. And another area, just for tips for our viewers to check for delamination and bubbles, would be anywhere underneath a window, a refrigerator vent, a cooktop vent, underneath the back windows. Those are areas that will start to bubble out. So when you look down the profile, of a fiberglass motorhome if you see bubbling and you could stick your hand in and, and it flexes that would be delamination i'm glad that you don't have to worry about on this no what's the roof made out of it's aluminum it's a solid piece of aluminum the only seam is the one along the, where it beats the wall and that where that cap covers so that's the only seam uh, now on a uh, what we would call a vintage motorhome like this is it hard to get RV insurance for it? Uh, no, we had no problem at all. We have New Jersey manufacturers and we just called them up and told them what it was and uh, they, I think they asked us for like approximate value or something uh, and uh, we got the insurance right away. I, I, I know people have a problem when they build out something like a van or something like that but I don't think you'd have a problem if it's, if, if it's I think there's some kind of rating, RV rating or something that it's, that it's a... Yeah, these uh, RVIA codes here, yeah. if it's built by an RV manufacturer and we'll have one of these seals here and that way you can get RV insurance, right. you get an RV loan yeah. and you can get accepted to some campground. So that's important to know that. Uh, one other thing that has come up a lot in Facebook groups, uh, I'm a member of the RV Atlas. It's a very popular Facebook group for RVing. Uh, one of my friends and his wife started the group. They're authors of many books. Is uh, allowing and accepting older motorhomes into campgrounds. Did you find any trouble when you went to go book a campground when they asked you the year, make, and model no, of your RV? We didn't, but I've heard places that do that. I guess they don't want something that looks really bad. I don't. I don't know. Yeah. It's a campground. And I guess they can't discriminate. If it's yeah. old, if it's too old, it's too old. You know, this is an older motorhome, but in my eyes, it's beautiful. Yeah. My old motorhome is too old for some campgrounds, and that's a 1997. Uh, is it just the age that they're looking at? Or it's the age. They, they don't want something that has a tarp over the roof that it was leaking or to the point where it, it's an eyesore, I guess, oh, for yours, neighbors. Yours is beautiful. Well, thank you. But if it's too old, for certain places, it's it's too old. They can't say, well, this one looks nice, we'll yeah. let you in. Not so it is something to think about. I, I hear it more and more. I haven't had it happen to me personally, and I'm glad it hasn't happened to you, but I guess if you go to some of the resort type campgrounds, it yeah. might become a problem. So it is something to think about when doing an older motorhome yeah. like this. Something else too that I thought about too is when you're shopping, when you're looking for a motorhome, there's no perfect motorhome or trailer or class C, class A, class B, they all have pluses and minuses. We would have preferred a full-time bed, uh, but because this is a 22 foot, we that took precedence over the bed. We wanted something that we could park fairly easily. Uh, so we went with the convertible dinette. Uh, but again, you have to find what, what you need the most and what, what's most important to you. But don't try, there's no, there is no perfect. It's a little bit of compromise. Yeah, which compromise. Whatever. Well, Ken and Stephanie, thank you very much for taking the time today to give our audience a tour of your motorhome. And there's some great information that you shared with us, too, that will help our viewers understand a little bit more about buying an older motorhome. Well, this is Patrick with New Jersey's Outdoor Adventures YouTube channel. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please like this video, comment, share, subscribe. I'd love it. And we'll see you soon.